All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi everyone and uh, welcome to the first Site Visibility Social Media Training Webinar. Um, I'm lucky enough uh, today to be joined by uh, site, vis site Visibility's very own Social Media Lead, uh, Joanna Morley. Hi everyone, yeah, I'm the Social Media Manager here at SiteVis. So I work on all the strategy and management of our social campaigns, um, as well as uh, working closely with the team to um, build our services and deliverables and hopefully deliver some really good campaigns. So looking forward to talking through some of, kind of uh, the insights and tips that we have on managing social media. Absolutely. So today we're going to be looking into the basic concepts of integrating social media uh, with some of your existing marketing and sort of customer interactions. Um, during our um, webinar we're going to have two polls um, quite close to the beginning and then one survey at the end. It would be fantastic if you could uh, finish those. We'll be answering questions at the end as we'd quite like the presentation part to um, last around 30 minutes and then perhaps we can extend it if you've got those questions. And of course we'll be um, taking uh, questions via Twitter um, which we will be able to hopefully answer in the next webinar um, all going well. So without any further ado, let's get on. So over the last decade, you know, we, we've seen social media becoming more and more integral to a uh, to anybody's any brand's marketing, um, and I, I think with with this quote here, it'd be interesting to start our first poll, which is uh, how much time do you currently spend on social media? Now, we are interested in uh, you know some some of the uh, statistics which we've been um, sort of gathering. We're going to be looking at that, uh, looking at what people uh, spend their time on. Um, and you know how people value social media a little bit later on. So, what makes social media different? I think this is kind of a big question at the moment with everybody kind of getting really, really into social. People knowing that they need to invest in it, not really knowing what it actually does or how to integrate it with their marketing or PR. So, I think that the main thing to kind of really understand and take away is that social media is really about ethical and sustainable engagement. It's not just about selling to people. That's basically the worst thing you could use social for. It's going to you know, massively turn people off. People are there to engage with each other, to engage with individuals, and to have actual meaningful conversations. Um, I think the key kind of thing is it's, it, yeah, it's about actually speaking to a person rather than kind of B2B cons where you're, you're kind of getting your brand message across. Um, and it's, yeah, it's a really, really good way to, to demonstrate value um, and, and to get some insights into who your audience are and, and really show them you know, what you can offer and how you can give them some value. Absolutely. Cool. Okay, and now I'm just curious. Um, I've had this uh, poll on it for uh, a little while and I don't think we've had any uh, responses yet. Any chance um, we could have a, a show of hands? Of anybody who has seen uh, our first poll. Ah, okay. That's lovely. Thank you very much. Cool. Okay, so everything seems to be going nicely. Um, okay, so. Oh, perfect. Aha, loads. I love it. <laughs> oh, a <fair> better amount. <laughs> Brilliant. That's Excellent. really useful. It kind of gives us some insight into what level of experience you guys have with social media, so we can make sure we tailor our webinars to, to kind of help you get the most out of it. Absolutely. So leading on to what you know, what are the benefits of using social media? Um, I think first and most importantly, it gives you some real insights into who your customers are. Because obviously with your marketing strategy, you have that in mind, you know who your target audience are. But with Facebook and Twitter, you can really break down and analyze the data of who is currently visiting your platforms, who's using them, who's engaging with you, and you can then shape your content around that. Um, it's also a fantastic way to increase brand awareness. You've got uh, you know, an additional unlimited number of platforms to post your brand messages out there. Uh, it allows you to, to talk to people um, who you perhaps have difficulty getting in contact with traditionally. You, know, you don't have to go through a PA or through a receptionist who's never going to put you through. You can now use Twitter or LinkedIn to go directly to the person you want to connect with. Um, 
And it also is a, is a really, really good way to increase quality traffic to your website. If you've got some engaged fans on your Facebook page or your Twitter profile, it's a great way to then direct them back to your site. Uh, that's something that we've seen particularly with, um, with LinkedIn for some of our fans, uh, some of our clients. It's, it's a really, really good way to actually qualify leads and then direct them to the site. And kind of lastly, something that's really valuable and people are beginning to kind of recognize now is using social media channels to actually um, monitor your brand, listen to what people are saying about you, and then respond accordingly. But we'll come back to that in a little bit. Okay, cool. So um, whilst we look at this rather lovely infographic uh, with some of the sort of uh, engagement metrics, I suppose, and, and some of the other uh, interesting figures about the, the best performing, I suppose, uh, social channels. Um, we'd like to uh, do our second poll, which is around which, um, which platforms you're most interested in learning about, um, because you know, we're, we're interested in perhaps extending this webinar, perhaps uh, providing more detail on uh, particular channels or particular um, aspects of marketing. Um, then we'll be again uh, going through that um, a little bit more in the survey at the end, but here's our second poll. Um, which social platforms are you most interested in learning more about? Now, just looking at this list here, it's interesting to see, um, well, actually it's not surprising to see Facebook um, at the top of uh, this chart. We've, you know, it's, it's gone from strength to strength um, over the years, as has Twitter. Uh, YouTube, no real surprise there. Um, almost used as, as strongly as a, a search engine, um, in some cases, for that sort of rich media that people uh, are becoming more and more used to. Um, I, I guess one thing I'm interested in is um, how, how long ago do you think this, uh, this was put together? This was at the end of 2011, so literally just a couple of months ago. Okay, I mean, I, I'm wondering where Pinterest is and uh, where Google Plus is on this now. Um, have, we, have we got the... Oh, sorry, we've got, um, I, I'm assuming that Google Plus will be a little higher, and um, I'm, I'm sure that uh, Pinterest will have uh, made, made, a, uh, made a name for itself in there. Um, yeah, Pinterest now, I believe, I read something this week, is now responsible for a third of all traffic to retail sites, <laughs> which is absolutely crazy. Yeah, I, I've been looking at some crazy figures about um, sort of how, how much revenue they're you know, reportedly making. Is it, do you, have you got the, it's, a, it's sort of in, in the billions. It's, uh, it's ridiculous, really. Um, and I guess we'll be seeing a lot more from Pinterest. Um, okay, so let's see if I can go on to the next slide. I'm going to close this poll. And here we are. Um, interesting to see 46% uh, of us uh, are interested in uh, learning more about Google+. Plus. I think that's the, the case in, um, in a lot of cases. And we will be uh, going into Google+, Plus in a lot more detail in the coming uh, webinar. So, uh, we can go on. Okay, so uh, in some interesting uh, stats here uh, before we go on to maybe a, a little bit more sort of actionable um, suggestions. We're seeing more and more organizations uh, increasing their spend on social, which isn't a surprise. Uh, I, su I suppose to me, what's a little bit sad is that only 12% of marketers are really participating in social media because they feel they have to. 10% uh, are participating because their competitors are, and, and I suppose that's all very well, but uh, there's, there's an, an amazing opportunity uh, provided by social media to, to get out and, you know, to really engage with, with your, the, the communities which surround your brand. Uh, that, that's, that's an opportunity that we've never had before as marketers. And so, you know, I, I think uh, to, to use it just because it's there or just because you know, you feel like you have to because your competitors are, I think that might be missing the point. Um, I mean, increasing brand awareness being the most important important benefit, or at least it's perceived to be. Again, I don't, I, I'm not sure I personally agree with that. I, I think it's about building these real relationships with the, these communities, which, which can be just invalu invaluable, both for those communities and, and for your brand. So, We've got a couple of other sort of benefits here, so that this is what people are, uh, are suggesting. So we've got the increased customer engagement, better brand reputation. Uh, you know that, that can work both ways, as we've seen with uh, some uh, sort of larger brands who have 
perhaps uh, not used social media as carefully as they could have, and, and increased communication. Um, so another sort of touch point to be communicating with your uh, target audience. Uh, so coming back to kind of the focus of today's session, how can we integrate uh, social media with our ongoing marketing strategy? And I think firstly it's important to note that I think you know, with social media, it, it should be the, the main focus of your marketing strategy in many ways, and that it should be integrated with basically everything you do, because it just gives you an, an opportunity to promote and get the most out of everything you're doing. So the first kind of thing we'll look at is how you can build a community. You already know your target audience. You ideally will want to have a good relationship with your clients and your customers. So social provides a fantastic way to do that and just to remind them of who you are and why they should, should remain loyal to you. Uh, customer service. This is kind of a, a growing trend with social platforms nowadays. A lot of brands are now investing a lot of money in making sure that their customers can contact them through social. Um, optimizing content, um, the saying goes, content is king, and I think that's very, very true. It's about making sure the content on your site is optimized and that uh, it's very easy to share so people can, can really spread, spread the word for you. Um, integrating with events, you know, part of a marketing strategy we usually involve putting on events uh, to promote yourself or to engage with your clients, so it's just really understanding how to leverage those to get the most out of them. And a big one at the moment is obviously how can you use social media platforms to um, really promote any offers or deals that you have and how can you use that to drive fans to your Facebook page or Twitter. Okay, so first of all we're going to talk about building community, uh, which I, I think uh, everybody here is, uh, gets a little bit overexcited about, so you'll, you'll have to forgive us if we can start to matter. <laughs> But um, I, I suppose the, the first uh, stage of building anything is, is to know what you're building. And, and in this case, I think knowing your audience is absolutely key. Knowing who are the communities that, that surround your brand and who, what sort of people um, are your fans or are the people who, who love what you do or, or similar things to what what you do or, you know, the, any, any of the interests which, again, like sort of satellite, I suppose, you're, you're offering. And then we're looking maybe more at long tail communities. Um, so I, I don't think about calling this phrase, <laughs> <laughs> um, but if I have, then uh, do, do let me know. Um, so we're looking at sort of audiences which share some of the interests and values of, as your uh, sort of core audiences. And then we're looking at the influencers. Uh, the contributors and the digesters um, from these communities. So who, who in these communities is producing the content and pushing that content and enabling the communities to grow and to, you know, to have, have that sort of, I suppose, the substance of the, the drive that community has. Who's, who's there actually producing the beautiful content and being able to, you know, uh, to, to provide uh, resources and assets which your communities are going to love and they're going to lap that up. And then, you know, who, who are the digesters? Who, who, who take that content on board and, and use it? And perhaps there's, there's a small amount of sharing with those guys, you know, between their perhaps smaller sort of subsets of those communities, whether that's on specific channels such as Twitter or Facebook or, you know, on, say, if they uh, blog commenting um, on, on the blogs which belong either to the, those influencers or uh, contributors. So I suppose once we've got an, a rough idea of who those people are, it's, it's, really, it's really important to know where those people are, where, where they reside online. Are they, you know, which blogs are they part of? Which blogs do they love? Um, you know, are they commenting? Are they getting involved with those through guest posts? Um, are they on particular networks? So, or channels, um, whether that's Facebook or Twitter or Pinterest or, you know, uh, you know, mums there, uh, the list goes on. And sort of the pages as well. So, I suppose for pages here, I mean, the pages on the channel. So, you know, are there specific Facebook pages which people are actually engaging with? And also, what language are they using? And I suppose it's interesting that this 
feeds back almost into sort of uh, more search. So, you know, if, if we understand what, what a, a target audience loves and needs and what language they're using, it's much easier to find them online and to be able to communicate with them effectively. Um, so when it comes to actually finding those audiences, there are loads of fantastic free tools out there that let you search for and actually target people. One of my favourites, and if we've got any time here, we'll actually do a bit of a live demo to show you how to use this. But Followabonk, which is quite its funny name, is actually um, a really brilliant, it's a free tool that allows you to search for people based on the information in their um, Twitter biography. So you could search for marketing manager, for example, and then specify location. That would bring up a whole list of people with uh, you know, those keywords in their biography. And it also lists them in order of um, follower numbers. So you can kind of very quickly siphon out who, you know, who, who are the really big influential people. So that's something I find really useful. But I mean, also you can use tools such as Hootsuite, which allows you to set up streams based on keywords, which is a, a really nice way to do it, um, to, to, to actually find people and make sure you're following them and then you can um, assess you know, what kind of content is going to be suitable for them. Okay, so next looking into customer service. Uh, customer service on social media, this is something um, that you know, I've, I've been particularly interested in and for myself personally, I have an absolute nightmare trying to get hold of, when I moved house, um, our broadband suppliers who, you know, continuously you wait on the phone for hours and hours, they never actually help you. Uh, and I found out, I went straight on Twitter, tweeted a somewhat abusive message at them, and within minutes, they were on the phone, sorted everything out, because people's reputation is just so important to them now. Um, and now, yeah, so 62% of consumers have actually used social media for customer service. And actually, yeah, 15% of the 16 to 24 age bracket actually prefer it than any other method. Um, it's still only sort of 8 and 3% of the um, kind of older demographics, but 44% of adults are now actually taking to the web to share grievances, uh, which yeah, is usually people complaining about things, which is why a lot of um, companies now. So First Direct, one of the first kind of big companies to really realise that something needs to be done. So they, they did a big study um, and interviewed over a thousand adults um, to, to actually see how they were, were using it. And you know, the results really, really demonstrated to them that they need to do something about it. Uh, other companies, BT, um, ASOS have set up specific uh, customer service and Facebook pages. And um, KLM actually built a Facebook app to keep their customers up to date with um, any transport or flight problems during the um, volcanic ash situation. Hmm. It's interesting with uh, the KLM and uh, what, a, what a sort of difference uh, that is compared to hmm. perhaps, uh, was it usage yet? Oh or, yeah. Um, yeah, I, if, if you were to uh, search for a particular uh, large, perhaps budget uh, airliner, um, there are some horror stories about uh, some of their social forays. Um, I think this is it as well, that if you're, you know, if you are going to use uh, social media as a customer service tool, then it's got to be something that you, you know, either state that you're only open between the hours of 8 or 5, or if people are only going to be monitoring it, but if you are promoting that you're going to do it, you've got to do it properly. There's got to be someone there to respond quickly with a, you know, with a suitable answer, or it's perhaps going to get you in a little bit more trouble than not dealing with it at all, but, you know, some companies are doing really, really well, and it's really helping their, their reputation, so it's, it's definitely worth looking into and worth investing. Um, so another kind of key uh, key tactic for integrating kind of ongoing marketing with uh, social media is integrating with events. I mean, I think this particularly is a fantastic opportunity to engage with people. Um, you know, if you're hosting something, find out who's going, or if you're attending an event, find out all the delegates who are attending. You know, find them on Twitter, uh, at message them beforehand. Uh, you know, say you're looking forward to the event, it gives, gives you a chance to actually find more people who you know are interested in the same thing as you, uh, particularly if your competitors are doing an event, see who's attending and, and make sure you're following those. If you're hosting an event, I think it's really important to set up a hashtag, 
um, just you know, with a, an abbreviated version of the event name, and that way people can follow it as, as you're actually presenting or as things are taking place. And also just to make sure you let everybody who's at the event know about that. Um, I mean, we had a lot of success you know, doing this for Byte and SEO, and you know, when we launched it, we managed to get it trending on Twitter that day. So it just shows the power of just setting up something like a hashtag can actually suddenly make people go, oh, what's this? And suddenly look to pay attention. Absolutely. Mm. Sorry. Oh, no. you, sir. Um, I think also having an event, you know, you suddenly end up with, as Graham was saying earlier, this rich media. You know, film your event, take pictures, get people to write blog posts and then promote them afterwards. You know, get these photos on Facebook and Flickr and just, you know, show people what you're doing just on other sort of less formal um, platforms. Uh, something else we've had success with is SciShares. Any presentation you're doing, you know, make sure it's up on SlideShare, embed it in your blog, um, and just follow everything up um, by, by engaging with the people who, who attended. Mm, absolutely, and I think you, you kind of start to uh, talk about like the crossover yeah. between online and you know offline social. The, uh, for those of us who like sort of uh, maybe a more traditional networking, business networking, getting in contact with people before the mm -hmm. event. You know, just uh, just a quick look between saying, "Oh, hi!" You know, see you're coming along. Yeah. You know, that, that can be a great way to meet people who perhaps you might not mm -hmm. get the opportunity um, in some cases. And another great way to get people engaged with your brand is to really make them a part of your brand. So I, I don't know about you, I love seeing pictures of myself at events, <laughs> and so I recommend you know do do get lots of people, uh, pictures of the people, especially the people that yeah. you want to be engaging with. Get those on your site. Get those on your blog. You know, get um, as much sort of um, feedback as you can, and make that public yeah. if, if you can. Yeah. You know, just just to you know, engaging by um, what would you use the word? Um, yeah, it, getting them involved yeah. in, in what you're uh, creating. A brilliant example of that as well. Uh, last year, Smirnoff, they actually had their nightlife exchange, mm. which was their ongoing massive, massive marketing campaign. So hosted kind of globally. Uh, so it was an actual real live event. They got live music, hosted a huge event in a country. But to get tickets, you had to uh, like and sign up to their Facebook page. All of the um, video content was put up on YouTube, on Facebook, on Flickr. So instantly, you know, people were tagging on the photos, sharing the videos because they were there. They were actually involved, um, and that kind of took them across to Smurfs um, social platforms. And they got, uh, I think they got kind of. 5,000 new likes just from, from one evening of, of an event and a you know, follow-up in terms of page views and shares was phenomenal. Okay, so content for social media. I, I suppose I'm interested in um, the sort of existing content that we already have um, to perhaps repurpose and the content that we might be able to create based on the sort of research that we've done for our um, for our audiences. So I suppose one, one of the key terms, and we spoke about this on the first slide, it's about sharing and enabling sharing. And we're, we're all sort of uh, fairly au fait and aware of the um, Google Plus buttons, the uh, like buttons on Facebook, the uh, sort of share or tweet buttons. Um, allowing people to use these um, sort of, uh, I guess, social enablers across the whole of your site can be really, really valuable. And I think in some cases, some people might see that, you know, okay, there's only been like one or two likes on some of the pages, or, you know, this page probably isn't going to be shared. I, I wouldn't let that put you off allowing people to share a lot of the content that you provide. Because even if one person does start to share that, you know, that, that can really improve the reach of your site. And everybody's got all sorts of likes and loves. Um, I think also, you know, it's a, it's a great way to increase um, traffic to your site from different places where you might not expect. I think we get quite yeah, a lot of visits absolutely. from SlideShare and from Scribe, you know, from documents we've uploaded ages ago that people have kind of stumbled upon when they've been looking for something to do with those topics. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a really good way to, to increase that as well. Absolutely. And so, once you've got this uh, sort of content on your site, on your blog, and allowing the sharing, don't, don't stop at that. Don't, don't just uh, sort of you know wait for people to come to you. It's about getting out there and you know outreaching 
as we like to call it, to use you know things like uh, SlideShare Scribes, uh, PR distribution, which could be really valuable, uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, obviously, uh, sort of uh, channels we're all sort of starting to become much happier uh, using. And I suppose for me, the most important thing is building relationships uh, with your community and its influencers. Um, so that kind of leads us onto the platforms that we'll be using. Um, I suppose the most important thing with um, social media is first of making sure you've chosen the right platform. Uh, you know, if your audience are trying to reach um, kind of CEOs of the company, perhaps Facebook's not going to be the right platform for you. Um, and it's you know important to think about looking at LinkedIn and Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, Twitter's still growing very fast. They've now introduced brand pages, which I believe are I think you've got to be spending over sort of twenty grand a month or something crazy to, to get one. So, you know, probably not for not for most of us. Um, but as we said, you know, it's brilliant for customer service. Uh, you know, using tools like FollowMonk and also just Twitter search, you can find and engage with your key influencers. You can do reputation management just, just searching for yourself mm. and keeping on a map. Um, so the main thing is, you know, identify who you want to talk to and just, you know, retweet people, ask people questions, respond if people ask you questions and actually start building up relationships rather than just posting what you've done today and what you're selling because, you know, that's very unlikely to engage people. Um, obviously, you know, Facebook's a big one now and they've just introduced the, the new timeline. So it's when, you know, no one's quite sure how that's going to roll out for brand pages yet. I think this month they've now introduced it, so um, selected brands are on there, but it, it, you know, it's to be seen in the next couple of months how that's going to roll out. 49% uh, of the UK are now on Facebook, I mean it's massive. It's one in every 13 people on Earth, <laughs> which is just insane. Um, and the average Facebook user has 130 friends, uh, which is unsurprising that 65 plus percent of companies are now starting to use Facebook as their marketing strategy. How many friends have you got? Go on. I don't know. Right. No, I did a big call the other day, so okay. I actually ditched a load of people from school. Sorry if you went to my school. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but leading kind of on to the next slide, um, you know, what's the best way to actually use Facebook? Um, and Facebook's edge rank is really based on the fact that you know, the more someone engages with you, the more someone likes a post or likes a comment, the more you're going to show up in their newsfeed. So that's kind of the key. It's got to be an engaging page. Again, if you're just posting content, then the, you know, the, no one actually has any value or, or engagement with them. You're not going to do well. And I think the kind of key thing is, you know, for a lot of clients we work with, oh, well, we want, you know, we want a million fans. Well, okay, fair enough. We can probably get you a lot of fans, but that doesn't actually mean anything, really. If the fans aren't going to go and turn into customers and they're not going to visit your site, what's the point in having them? Mm -hmm. I think it's, you know, there's a lot more value in actually having a smaller but really engaged community who then actually going to buy things from you. You know, I think that's kind of the key, and people need to stop being so obsessed with fan numbers and the mm -hmm. engagement metrics much more. So yeah, the, you know, the, the main highlight for it is to make it engaging, interesting. You know, use rich media. You can, you know, you can integrate Spotify. You can post YouTube videos. You can add links from your website. Ask questions and just make it fun. And also host, you know, competitions and. Um, Kind of one-off campaigns are a great way to get people to your page. Obviously, make sure you're within Facebook's promotional guidelines on that one. Just make sure you're careful with that. But um, just make it engaging. That's the key, really. Do we have any resources on our blog about the guidelines? Yes, I think I've done a blog post. But if anyone's interested, just um, either tweet us or get in touch, and I can, can send you some links about so, the guidelines. Okay, fantastic. So, I mean, I guess. Um, Finally, just quickly looking at YouTube, uh, YouTube being uh, one of the fastest growing social networks in, in the UK um, over the last few years. Um, an app, absolutely outrageous amount of content up there. And you know, it's, it's, it's very much integrated into Google now as well. So as well as a social channel, it's also a really useful sort of search um, sort of tool to, to, you know, as well as creating uh, beautiful content for people to engage with, it's also a great way to make people more aware of your brand. Um, which can be 
you know, a, a, a great way to differentiate yourself. I think not a lot of brands are actually using it effectively at the moment. Those that do, um, have had some great results, you know, actually building up a community and showing their content and showing maybe a more personal side to the brand on YouTube can work really well. Cool. Okay, so the very last section, and uh, we have just gone over 13 minutes, but we, we won't be long, I promise, um, is managing social media. And so this, this is quite an interesting topic for me, and um, I think I'd like to do a, a webinar on it, to be honest. Um, so looking at sort of how to um, manage your, your campaigns, starting with the listening. So, you know, what are people, what are your audience saying out there? Then planning based on that, so working out, okay, what are our communities, what stories do we want to be um, engaging them with, and then how are we actually going to be marketing that through engagement, and finally the evaluation, so, you know, how have we done, how, you know, can, can, how can we quantify the work that we've done, and how can we, how can we feed that back into who we're listening to, and how we're planning again. Um, but again, perhaps that, that's for another day. Yeah, I think the most important kind of takeaway from that is before you jump into, oh, we're going to do social media, yeah, the first point is key. Listen to what people are saying <laughs> and listen, you know, think about who you're talking to before you suddenly go and just tweet things and post things on Facebook without really thinking about it. Okay, so the takeaways. Um, yeah, kind of the key points uh, for what we wanted to cover today is you know, use social media as a tool. Think about everything. It doesn't have to be a separate or we need to, part of my marketing plan is to do some social media. You know, make social media part of everything in your marketing strategy. Absolutely, and part of doing that is understanding your audience, understanding where they are, who they are, and what language they're using. Uh, yeah, and the key to that is you know, create content that's going to engage them. There's no point posting a load of stuff if it doesn't actually appeal to your audience and they're not going to share it anyway. Mm. I mean, we'll be talking more about monitoring and indeed measuring uh, social media at another point. Um, but with, you know, with the posts, with the content you're creating, even, even if it's just, you know, just a single tweet, keep an eye on what's happening there. Don't, don't allow your users to start, like, you know, getting engaged with you and then ignore them. That, that, that would be a horrible waste of time and damaging to your brand. Um, and definitely about establishing the right voice. Um, you know, perhaps obviously you want to stay within the right tone of voice of your brand, but also don't go and be corporate on Facebook and really, really chatty on LinkedIn. You know, you've got to make sure you're using the right tone of voice for the platform that you're using. I, I know that Joe would like this one. Don't be self-promotional. It's really important to make sure that you are not the, that person who's trying to sell to people over social media without any thought for what they want or need. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants it. It, it ruins the experience for people. It damages your brand. Um, nobody wants that. Go on. Do you want to add it? <laughs> yeah, I, I just think, I mean, they always use the, the um, kind of imagine social media is like walking into like a cocktail party. You would not just walk in and walk up to someone and start trying to sell something. You know, it's about actually first, you know, building a relationship and then, you know, once you reach that point you can go and have a proper conversation and then drop in, or oh, by the way. <laughs> um, so I think, you know, using that's quite a quite a valuable way to look at it. Absolutely. Evaluating success again will be looking at the measurement more in the future. Um, Google Analytics is starting to provide more and more integration with uh, these sort of like buttons that you see. And also Facebook, we've got the Facebook insights which you'll be able to see on your brand's page. Um, and finally, I think that the most important thing is there are tons of free tools out there. Play with them and just keep learning, you know, see what works for you and go with that. <laughs> cool. Okay then, right, so um, we're going to be looking at a survey um, when, when this um, webinar finishes. But well, we do have 22 questions to um, sort of look at and answer. Um, so we're going to have a little look at those now, um, if we've got time. Um, let's see. Um, we're having some, some difficulty um, opening these questions. Um, OK, perhaps it's starting to look like we might have to answer these um, in our next webinar. Um, where are we? Okay. Um, okay, so I, actually uh, lots of uh, good feedback. 
Um, not so many uh, questions. So what we'll do is, as I say, open this up um, for anybody to uh, send us um, tweets um, after the event so that we, we can sort of answer specifics next time um, we meet. Um, are you... Um, but yeah, thank you all for listening. I hope it's been helpful. And I think, yeah, as Grace said, just um, tweet or get in touch if there's any specific things that we didn't um, concentrate on today. And we'll make sure we have some more specific, in-depth um, webinars on, on more of these topics. Absolutely. Uh, this will be on the blog, um, both as a recorded um, event, um, which I assume will probably be using YouTube for naturally, um, and um, as a slide share as well. Um, so you can get these notes. And again, thanks ever so much for joining us. It's been uh, quite a pleasure. Yeah, thank you very much, guys. I uh, look forward to seeing you all next time. Thank you.